This is The Road Show, and I'm your host, David Warren. And I'm glad to say that this is part two, finally, of my conversation with Jen Tringale, author of the new book, Calling, Understanding Your Purpose, Place, and Position. But before we dive into the book or back into the book, let's talk a little bit with Jen You are such an interesting guest. I love it when you're on the program. Oh, that's probably one of my favorite descriptives is interesting. Nobody wants to be boring, you know. But I love getting to come and talk with you, David. You have a way of just quickly diving into the depths of whatever might be there. And so it's refreshing to me. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I have been binge listening to your podcast, to Jen Trengel's really? podcast, and I have coined a new phrase. Okay. Ginging. That is when you binge <laughs> Jen Trengel. You've Oh, this is great. Ginged. Hashtag, it's a worldwide trending topic. Maybe, maybe not. So you asked me a question before we started. David, do you ever go on vacation? And I was a real vacation kind of guy years back, but I like to stay home a lot. Yeah. To me... Being refreshed means being at home. I get that. And just Oof. exhaling. Yes. And with very few, if any, calls. It's so great. So then I rebutted with, well, do you go on vacation, Jen? Because you're so busy traveling the world ministering. Right. And you said. Yeah. So it's funny that I started with asking you that question because uh, it's something that I clearly have to work on as far as the rest. But I will totally say that I can totally relate to you just want to be home. You know, it's so wonderful to get to be home. So, but I've also learned that if I'm home, I can easily get pulled in to work or phone calls or ministry. So, uh, so last year, it's actually the end of the year, sort of like the Lord putting a thumb on me, you will rest and you will rest now. And so I wound up rearranging things, worked with my staff, and I said, guys, it's crazy, but as soon as I finish this meeting in Orlando, I'm going straight from there, I'm jumping on a plane, and I'm going to go hide away for a week. And so because of doing some ministry stuff overseas, and especially in the Caribbean islands, uh, we've done a lot in the nation of Grenada. So I had found this spot that is just tucked away quiet little family owned place. It's beautiful. Everything's right there. And so I can just really unwind. So I had really kind of had to maneuver a lot to fit this in and make it happen. So I was so thrilled. Well, I go to the airport in Nashville where I live to fly to Orlando to do this meeting. There was this big ruckus by this uh, gate as I'm walking. It's a Saturday morning busy international airport. And what got my attention is that there was a standstill at this gate. Not just the people that were boarding, but I was watching as people were zooming through that busy concourse. As soon as they reached whatever was going on at this gate, people came to a dead stop. Well, if you fly very much, airports are not standstill places. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, I've seen a cart pull up and someone's on the ground like difficulty breathing and people are just zooming by, you know, so this has my attention. And so as I get up closer to it, there's this stillness and I realize people are singing. Long story short, this was a flight that was American Airlines had partnered with the Gary Sinise Foundation, who does a lot of work with Gold Star families. This plane was filled with children and their parent or guardian that was living, and they were gold star children, meaning either their immediate uh, parent Mm -hmm. or caretaker was killed in the line of duty. And so they, all these kids, backpacks, I mean, precious, they were lined up and they were sending them to Disney World on an all expenses paid vacation for a week. And uh, they had this gentleman there that had begun to sing the national anthem. And when he began to sing it, and people saw all these kids lined up, just strangers without anybody telling them had stopped. They had their hands over their hearts. I mean, businessmen, families, and everyone honored these children 
and their surviving parents, and we all sang the national anthem. They had um, some people, military personnel that were in uniform, that were in salute. Well, I'm just bawling because that stuff is a big deal to me. I was raised in a very patriotic family. And my first thought was, I have to capture this for my family. Mm -hmm. Like, my family will love this. So I just grab my cell phone, as we do in this modern age, hand over my heart, bawling, and I'm videoing this moment. And so I just jumped on my plane, flew to Orlando. As we're sitting at the gate waiting to deplane, I thought, you know, I don't have time to send this video to all my family members. I'll just post it to my social media. And I thought I better write a quick thing about what was going on. Mm -hmm. And that was it. Got off the plane, three days of meetings. And I got on the plane Monday morning to leave on this vacation that I have moved heaven and earth to make happen. And I had told my staff, I really don't care if the world is burning. Do not contact me. Like, just handle it. So I fly in. I get to my room. In the Caribbean. In the Caribbean at this beautiful resort. It's time to unwind. I connect to the Wi-Fi, and I have a message from my office, please call. And I thought, clearly, I was not, you know, clear enough. And so I call. I said, what could possibly be happening? They said, have you checked your social media? I said, no, that's why I'm on vacation. They said, well, that video you posted has gone viral. It has over a million views. And right now, we have messages from every producer and every major news outlet in the nation wanting to interview you about what you saw. So long story short, they had to set up like a private feed. And the next day, starting early in the morning, I sit and did one call in uh, Skype interview with CNN, Fox News, uh, ABC, NBC, USA Today. I mean, the Weather Channel <laughs> picked it up. It went everywhere. We actually had the Gary Sinise Foundation contact us and said, you're getting more publicity than we are. Here's our talking points we had for Gary. Would you mind mentioning them? We said, absolutely. And, you know, David, it was wild because I got done. You know, you do all these call-ins all over the nation. You're on national, international television. When the last one's done, they turn the lights off. And, and now it's just me sitting in a room. And I'm sitting there going, what what just happened? Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, this really wasn't about me at all. I just happened to be in the right place at the right time and witnessed a moment and said, wow, for all the divisiveness in our nation, for all the political prowess and all the back and forth, all the culture wars in this moment, all that mattered was honor. And people from every walk of life felt compelled to honor the sacrifice that these kids had to make and say that's worth honoring. And I thought, you know, we're still a nation of honor when it counts. Jen Trengel is our guest. And Jen, you just mentioned that you were in the right position. Yeah. Your book, Calling, which is subtitled Understanding Your Purpose, Place, and Position, do you find that when you are true to God's calling on your life, these kind of things happen? I really do. And you know, David, I think sometimes we so over-spiritualize um, the concept of calling or fulfilling the purpose of God. I mean, it is spiritual in essence. So I, not to take away from that, but I think we make it such a mysterious thing. How could I know? Will, will I know? I'm probably not doing what I need to do to fulfill my calling. But when you look at the word and examples of men and women of God who fulfilled their calling in crazy circumstances, it all starts with the exact same ingredient. And it's not rocket science. It starts with availability. And today, even in our crazy, chaotic world, you know, I still believe that the essence of the step into moving on what is maybe the moving sidewalk of your calling is just saying, God, I'm available. 
um, every day I start out with the same prayer. And I just say, God, you know the responsibilities that lie before me today. And even still, I'm yours to command. And so it it's really starting with a posture of availability. Because you can't pray that prayer without positioning your heart to have an ear to the Holy Spirit to be able to prompt you as you're moving through a fast-paced day. And so it starts with that availability. The second thing it has to come with then is recognizing windows of opportunity because that's all that happened that day. Mm -hmm. It's not like I went to the airport praying in the spirit going, I sense something big. (laughs) I mean, I was just going, I got to preach for three days and I'm going on vacation. You know, it was very natural. It's kind of like Jesus in the Bible. He was on his way somewhere and these miraculous things would happen. Yes. And I, I really think, you know, that's what a life of calling is made up of is being available, but then you have to recognize windows of opportunity. Um, How do you stay alert to that? Well, I think it really starts with that posture of the heart. I think it just starts with going, okay, I am walking through this natural world, but I heard a um, someone say recently, I'm trying to think who it was I was listening to, And he said, you know, our lives are way more spiritual than we even realize. And we can get so segmented about the spiritual parts of life and then the very natural Mm -hmm. parts of life. Heaven does not see our life on earth this way. You know, heaven sees (laughs) redeemed men and women of God saying, that are in relationship with him saying there is one of the family of God that we should be able to prompt and use in this moment as an agent of change. And I really talk about that in the book because that's such a huge piece of it. It really is. I mean, we can all look at people who have done amazing things with their lives in the kingdom of God. But do you know for every one that we know of, there's hundreds that we don't know of? that did significant things because they recognized a window of opportunity in a moment and said, I think God wants me to do this. And something cataclysmic happened for somebody, but the rest of us never knew about it. But they're just as called as a Billy Graham that stood on stages and spoke to millions through his lifetime. It's such a fulfilling way to live. Before we take our first break, um, we're going to do this as a segment on purpose, our place, and then our position, all a part of our calling. Um, Would you not say that Christian's purpose is pretty universal, that we're to shine the light of the gospel in this dark world? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, even that can get a little overwhelming, I think, but really, you know, our initial call is to be a witness, a witness to what really the words of Jesus over and over, we're really called to be a witness of the goodness of God. How can a world that doesn't know God know that he's good? His goodness has to reflect off of something for people to see it and go, wow, why are you like that? Or why, why are you like this toward me? Do you get asked that? I have before. I mean, you know, I think people fight for words to kind of ask us questions like that. <laughs> yeah, they you don't know? know how to ask it in a religious or spiritual way. No, they're not going to say, I see a light of glory <laughs> emanating from you. But no, they're drawn but, to you. Yes, people will be drawn. I've had wild... Um, and favor s- comes with it. A lot of favor comes with that. I, in fact, a couple months ago, I walked into a hair salon in Nashville, and this gentleman was there. He's an older gentleman, and I'm just waiting for my appointment. And he he just walked over to me and he said hello, and I said hi. And he said, "Um, are you here for an appointment?" I said, "Yeah, I think I'm actually the next appointment." He said, "Oh," he just looked at me and he goes, "Who are you?" 
And I just kind of looked at him. I said, well, I think I'm the next hair appointment. You know, I didn't know how to answer it. Long story short, this guy was a friend of the salon owners. Well, the salon owner, long story short, she does a lot of makeup for celebrities and hair. This guy was a Beyonce and Jennifer Lopez makeup artist that they take on the road. And he's in town spending some time with this. We sit down on the couch and he says, you've got to tell me what you do. He said, I don't know why. I just got to know what you do. And so I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, okay. How do I phrase this? How do I phrase this exactly? Because I don't want to shut down whatever this window of opportunity might be. Okay, so we're all listening to you, Jen. We're curious. Did you say I'm a traveling minister? Absolutely not. Because I knew that if I said that our culture has an immediate box and a whole stigma that comes with that, and it would box me in from whatever was wanting to transpire. So I'm sitting there going, I want to be as truthful as possible, but I want to stay out of whatever boxes he might have for who I am. That'll make the switch go off. Exactly. And so I said, well, I said, uh, I'm a, a speaker. I said, I'm a conference speaker. I travel and I'm an author. I write books. Well, I knew that was going to be a lead in to what do you talk about? What do you write books about? And so, which happened. And so I said, well, I basically spend my time helping people discover and connect with the divine purpose for why they're here on earth. And this man just kicked back and looked at me wide-eyed and said, in all my life, I've never met anybody who does what you do. And I said, really? And he said, yeah. And I said, well, what do you do? And so, mm -hmm. you know, that's when he told me. And I'm going, oh, okay. We wound up talking. Exchanged information? Exchanged information. We sat there and talked for about an hour and a half. Got some fabulous makeup tips, by the way. So talk about favor. Um, and have stayed connected uh, through social media. Every now and then I'll get a DM from him on Instagram. Love that post, Jen. Love what you just said. Or, And I'm just like, you know what, God, you are building roads and mm -hmm. building highways. I love the conversations that we've had because this man, he truly has a gift um, from the Lord. And God has a purpose for his life. I would never encounter him. He's probably not going to walk in to one of the doors of the churches I'm speaking at. But being in position, right place, right time, and going, huh, this might just could be a window. Something really cool happened. I think heaven loves setting those moments up. I do too. Did you give him a book? I didn't. I didn't, but I need to. All right. Send him send the book, him. Calling by Jen Tringale. It's yes. available wherever books are sold on Whitaker House. FYI. Also, through your website, jentrengale.com, J-E-N-T-R-I-N-G-A-L-E.com. I'm David Warren, your host, and when we come back, we'll talk about finding our place in God's plan, plus how to more effectively position ourselves to work that plan. Back after this. I'm David Warren, here with some exciting news for Oasis listeners. We have a new mobile device app. It's free, easy to download, and lets you enjoy our refreshing music and talk everywhere you go. If you have an Android cell phone, go to the Google Play Store. And if you have an iPhone or iPad, visit the Apple Store and search for Oasis Radio Network. Be an Oasis ambassador and share this news with family and friends around the world. On today's Roadshow, Jen Trengale is here as we continue our discussion on her newest book, Calling, Understanding Your Purpose, Place, and Position. And really, you have been on a about a one- to two-year calling tour yeah. talking about the information that's included in this book about understanding our purpose, place, and position. How's it going? It's going really well. You know, it's interesting because that book, David, was one of the biggest fights of my life 
to get done. It almost didn't happen. I mean, it was just a bombardment on another level, as they say. And so um, I almost pulled the plug on it. I thought, it's just not happening. There's so much going on. Um, I just don't feel like I have the space clear to really get this out. And I just am trying to keep my head above water. And I had said to the Lord, I said, all right, God, unless you speak to me specifically in this next bit of time here, I'm just going to call the publisher and say, I think we're going to have to wait. In that three days, I had three different ministers that I really know well and respect contact me and in essence say, Jen, I don't know what this means, but God told me to tell you, write the book. Hmm. So I thought, clear, got it. All right, I'm going to do this. And so all I can say is when I sat down to write it, it was so very much a download from heaven. I mean, there were times where I thought, I just almost feel like I'm taking dictation here. And when the book came, you know, they send you like the pre-release to the author. Mm -hmm. And so they sent me a box of pre-release books, which is a great moment for an author. You know, when that, I remember when my first book came and I was like, wow, this is amazing. So this one was a big deal as well. And I remember opening that box and looking at all those books. And my first thought was, I have no idea what's in that book because it was such a download from the Lord that I sat down and read the whole thing cover to cover and went, Lord, clearly I am just the pipe here. Um, so those are incredible experiences to get to have. What's been wonderful is getting to meet people from across the country all of the contact we get in our office email from people that a copy has found their way to them and what God has used it to instigate. And I think that's really been across the board the biggest, um, the, probably the most consistent piece of feedback is there's something on this book, David, that God uses it to instigate or spark something in people. It's like if they were stuck, it sort of gets them unstuck. If the vision is just sort of, like I say, circling the airport, I have a lot of airport references because I fly all the time, but it's almost like sometimes, you know, in life where you hit those spots where you just feel like you're circling. It's almost like it gets them out of that holding pattern. Mm -hmm. That and, makes total sense to me. Yeah. And so, oh, I've been there. I've I've so been there. I can so relate. So hearing that this book has something on it to sort of instigate or jumpstart whatever is next in people's lives has been so rewarding. We just found out it's being used in some major Bible schools here in the U.S. That's so encouraging to me. So I love getting to hear that. Every time I hear one of those stories, I go, oh, that's what that fight was for. That's what that fight was for. So we talked in the first segment about our purpose. It's universal for Christians. It's to reflect God's love, yeah. grace, mercy, everything about God to others, which is a, an attraction to the world. They want what we have. But then there's this thing called our place, finding our place. And uh, let's address that. Our place is where we're going to be used by God for his purpose. Right. And most likely, it's going to be in a place where we're using the talents that God has given each of us. Yes, so true. And one of the things that you pointed out in part one is that everybody should have come away from that interview knowing that you're just as important as the preacher, the evangelist, the prophet, yes. the apostle, the teacher. Yes. That's just not your place necessarily. That's where you go to be fed or you're fed by that ministry. Right. You are just as important where you are. Yes. If you are in a place where you are utilizing the talents that God has given you. Exactly. Yeah, because whatever those gifts are, even no matter how natural, quote unquote, those gifts might seem. So, 
you know, your gift is not, I'm a great preacher. Your gift is not, I minister to the sick. You're, you're, you know, we're talking about gifts like, I'm amazing at throwing parties. I'm amazing at working on cars. I'm amazing at, you know, um, business. I'm an, an, an amazing attorney. I'm a detailed person. All of these seemingly very natural gifts, when the anointing of God is able to flow through those gifts. Those gifts become tools that God can use in the earth to minister the anointing to people. I don't know that we have done a great job in the body of Christ at making a big deal about that. I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, we... Like, for example, yes, Tim Maroney is our sound man. Yes. He's phenomenal at what he does. Yes. This is his place. Right. And it takes an anointing because he is willing to let the anointing of heaven come through what he does. It takes everything to another level. It's part of the oil that makes all of this work. You know, it adds to it. But isn't that what Ephesians says, that each joint supplies And we say that about the body of Christ. We say it about a local church. But that supply of the anointing that each joint supplies is meant to bring a supply to a corporation, to an office, to a business, to a school, if you're a teacher, to a home where you're raising children. There is a supernatural supply that just makes this thing Work. The kingdom of God is wanting to bust out of the four walls of the church and to actually make, you know, this company where a lot of believers happen to work that know how to let the anointing flow through their gifts for people to come and go, I don't know why, but this is the best place I've ever worked. It's peaceful. People get along. I feel rejuvenated here. We're getting new accounts all the time. Things are flourishing. That is planning the heavens in the earth. It's not ever meant to be contained to, wow, that service was just wonderful. Yes, it. we need to have wonderfully anointed church services, but that's where the equipping happens. Well, who wants to spend their life carrying around a bunch of equipment that's never used? Used. And so I've had this thing rolling in my heart lately, David, about as citizens of heaven, let's not just be consumers. I don't think that's what life on earth is meant. I just want to consu- be a consumer of the kingdom of God. No, we are here. Do you mean living in meetings? Yes, living in meetings or living from meeting to meeting or living off of meeting. To meeting. We those are equipping places. It would be like, you know, somebody signing up to serve in our United States military and saying, I would just like to stay at West Point for all of my days. <laughs> Why? Yeah. To what end? So we've trained you, we've equipped you, we've weaponized you, you know, we've taught you everything. And and to spend your life doing that. You know, in other words, we would look at that soldier and say, you're missing the point entirely. And in this generation, we cannot afford to miss the point entirely. You sell T-shirts on your website, right? We do. I thought of a good T-shirt for you. You did? Yeah, just now. You're so helpful. Are you ready? Yeah. Embrace your place. Oh, I love that. You're right. We totally need to do that. Embrace your place. And hashtag it. That's hashtag embrace your place. Okay, Paul, Paul, the Paul, wrote in Ephesians chapter 4, walk worthy of the vocation, your career, where you work, in which you are called. So there's a calling to be there. But what does it mean to walk worthy of that calling, of being, like, for example, of being here at a radio station? How how do I walk worthy here at Oasis Radio Network? That's a great point. And, you know, David, what most people don't know is that word that got translated as worthy um, can have a connotation to it of, like, I'm probably not worthy, right? Or ethereal, like, I have no idea what that means. Or I have no idea what that means. Very, very good point. 
Um, but a better maybe uh, word picture for what Paul was actually saying, it was almost like a coach that's coaching an athlete, sort of coaxing him on saying, come on, you can do this. Come up to your full potential. Come up to this. Come up to the fullness. Remember in another place, that same Paul said to a group of believers, why are you living as mere men? In other words, what was he saying? He was saying, why are you doing life like people outside of God do life? Come up, come up to this. Walk worthy of the call. In other words, you have this Whatever spiritual word you want to call it, you have this calling, you have this mantle on you, you have this ability on you, you wear this sort of, you know, Avenger superhero coat of the anointing of heaven that is on you for all that you do in this life. Why are you doing it acting like it's not there? Because it's going to take... Or not important. Or not important. Or insignificant. I think that's where a lot of Christians fall. Well, I just, you know, work on cars or I just employ five people to do this. That's a big deal. It's actually, I think to heaven, it's almost like an opening in the earth for heaven to move through. Um, Paul was saying, walk worthy of the call. Don't live life like you don't have it. That's what your ministry is. Is all about. Exactly. And that's really the mandate God gave me. I mean, I still remember the place I was at coming down the stairs in my townhouse in a little town in Ohio. And I was in the full time ministry. I was on staff at a great church. Loved that church. Loved those pastors. Loved what I did. And the Lord said, What you've been doing is a good thing, but it's now no longer the thing that I have called you to. And if you're going to do the thing that I've called you to, it means you're going to have to get up and get out of the boat. What I've called you to, and he gave me this mandate to awaken destiny. And that's really what I spend my time doing, whether it's in a hair salon, (laughs) having a conversation, or standing in front of hundreds to thousands of people. Jen Tringale is my guest. I'm David Warren, and we're talking about her book, Calling, Understanding Your Purpose, Place, and Position. This book is out wherever books are sold, also on Jen's website, jentringale.com. And let me go ahead and mention that you have what's called a digital Debo for this. Yes, we did a release package with that, and you can get a seven-day devotional. It's a digital download, so when you purchase it, it gets emailed right to you, and it's to give you something to start speaking over your destiny. It's like a declaration that you can make. I actually took it from my own devotional life. The Lord had said to me one day, Jen, I want you to start speaking to your day before your day can start speaking to you. And I thought, ooh, I love the sound of that. Anything that's That's a repeatable phrase. Right? Say that again, please. He said, I want you to start speaking to your day before your day can start speaking to you. Give us an example of how you speak to your day. So in that moment, I knew I needed to get vocal. And so I just said, okay, Lord, what does that look like? Because I have learned a valuable lesson from men and women of faith that speak into my life. And it's a page out of the ministry of Jesus. He said, I only say what I hear my father say. I only do what I see my father do. So I could have just said a lot of things. I could have just quoted a lot of scriptures. But I just sat in that moment and said, heaven, give me things to say. And so there were some things that he dropped in my heart to begin to declare. And so it just started out with things like, Father, I boldly declare that my steps are ordered of the Lord, that today I'm always in the right place at the right time, that favor goes before me, that I recognize Kairos moments, windows of opportunity, and that when I'm in that moment, everything I need to fulfill your purpose in that moment, I've got it. Well, you can't start out your day saying those things without just walking in such an awareness of it Mm -hmm. because you've already put the words out there. What I noticed is it started heading off 
what would typically be just frustrating things, you know, how you just one it's like one thing right. after another. The little stuff. Yes. That at the end of the day, you're just exhausted from it. I noticed when I got habitual about doing that, one of my heroes in the faith, Gloria Copeland says, um, let's see, how does she say it? She says, power is in the consistency. So it's not what you just do on Tuesday. It's what you consistently do every day. And that applies to spiritual things. So when I got habitual about speaking to my day before my day could speak to me, I noticed such an immediate decrease in those little things of frustration that would just pull on your energy at the end of the day. I noticed, wow, they're not really even showing up like they used to. Or they're not bothering me like they used to. They're not bothering me like they used to. And then, of course, such a pickup in momentum, Mm -hmm. making tracks, you know, projects that I was involved in, just really picking up steam, not getting so distracted because so much pulling for my attention, which is something I really have to work on because I'm more of a visionary and I'm more of an in the moment person. And so all of that really helped keep me on track. So we literally took that from the pages of my own devotional and said, you know what? This is a strategic tool. We need to make this available. And so that's what we did. It's called Digital Devo, and you can find it in the store on gentrengale.com as well as the book Calling, Understanding Your Purpose, Place, and Position. Jen Trengale is spelled J-E-N-T-R-I-N-G-A-L-E dot com. I'm David Warren, your host, and when we come back, we get to talk about my favorite part of this triad of P's, uh, Purpose, Place, and now we'll talk about position when we come back. The Road Show is a listener favorite, which airs each weekday here on the Oasis Radio Network, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 noon Central. The Road Show also has a great section on our website, oasisnetwork.org. There you'll find audio archives of select past interviews, plus guest lineup, and contact information and links to our Road Show sponsors and its hosts. So join us for The Road Show whether on your radio or on your computer at oasisnetwork.org. I really love this interview because it's one of the times on the road show when yours truly, David Warren, is doing a program with that much of a safety net. I mean, I've got questions over here that I can glance at, but I keep being pulled just another way. And Jen, I want to ask you, Jen Trengale, does this happen to you when, okay, you are booked by a church to minister, and then just about the time you've got your Bible and you're walking up those steps, all of a sudden you get this inkling, do something different. And you're like, are you kidding me? Oh, it's quite a feeling, isn't it? What do you do in that moment? Well, I will say... I've been in the ministry over 20 years, but I've been doing this for eight. And I will say it's still an unnerving feeling, but I've gotten a little more comfortable with it because, and I know you can relate to this, because of the history of being in those moments before and just going with it and trusting him, and he did something amazing. And you walk away from those going, I've never been so much aware of the fact that I'm just the pipe here, that what's changing lives is not originating with me. My job is to be a conduit and to keep that pipe as clear as possible so that it's the purity of everything heaven wants to say, because if I say what heaven wants to say here, and I do what heaven wants to do, so much is about to happen that is beyond anything I could ever cause to happen. I love when Paul talks about the manifold wisdom of God, because it conjures up such a visual picture in my head. And I think it's because I come from a long line of multitasking women in my family. 
we're never just doing one thing at one time. And to me, that's the manifold wisdom of God. The manifold wisdom of God is going, if you'll just leave your pages aside and take your cues from me, I'm about to do so many things at one time. You think you're here to just do this. And that's true. That is what I'm going to do. But there is a whole litany of other things that I'm going to accomplish if you'll just do it the way I'm moving you to do it. It brings such a high yield of ministry. I mean, you know, people walk up and say, when you said this, this broke off of me. And you're thinking, I'm pretty sure I never said that, but praise God, you know. Or that wasn't in my notes. Yeah, that definitely wasn't in my notes. I mean, that whole, the whole book is, is, is one of those things. So I can appreciate the moment that you're talking about. And I think, you know, it's interesting you bring it up because at the beginning of this year, I just got on my knees and I said, Lord, you know, I've been doing this for seven years now. You learn some things, you know, you learn how to go, oh, I think this is supposed to happen. And I have crafted a communication road of how I get to that. Mm -hmm. Or I feel like God wants to do this. I know how to flow in that anointing. So I do A, B, and C. And I just got on my knees and I just said, God, I'm going to approach this year with you in the ministry as if it's my first day on the job. Like I don't know anything. Not to set aside the experience and the skill and the study, but I'm not going to lean on that. I want to come into every moment so dependent on you that you can maneuver me however you want. And I think that is the balancing act of when you have accumulated some skill, you've gotten skillful with your gifts, which we should. We should grow in skill of the gifts, the talents God's given us. Um, but you can fall into the trap of getting so comfortable in that that you kind of don't require him anymore. And I, I think it was in my first book, but... Anytime I get to speak to, especially Bible school students or college students, I love when I get to speak on college campuses. Um, But I love getting the opportunity to say, listen, don't get so head smart. Don't get so skilled in whatever you're doing that you step away from grabbing on to the live wire of the Spirit of God in a moment and saying, what do you want to do? It's okay that I don't know what this looks like. That's another level. But I love those moments. I do too. Yeah. Kindred spirits. We're going to do a part three. I'm so excited. And the part three is really going to focus on finding our position, but I think we should touch on it. Okay. We've covered our purpose, reflecting God mm-hmm. so that others are drawn to us, finding our place, and many times that's going to be where we work, and it's associated with using our God-given talents, but then positioning ourselves within that occupation, within that workplace. Yes. And uh, the first two are really Mm God-driven, but the third is, it's up to you. It's so true. It's so true. You know, I recently spent some time with a lady that's sort of always been a hero in the faith to me. In fact, um, she did an interview uh, on the Oasis Radio Network, Patsy Caminetti, mm-hmm. who's become a sweet friend to me. But she said this to me once. She said, Jen, have you ever stopped to think about how was Jesus able to fulfill his calling in just three years? And she said, think about the magnitude of what he was called to do, everything he had to say, everything he had to affect. And he had three years to do it. Have you ever thought about how was he able to fulfill it all in three years? And of course, as many times when I'm talking, you know, with men and women of God like that, they're usually thinking about things that have never dawned on me, (laughs) which is why I love having them in my life. They make me think bigger. And so I, I said, honestly, that thought has never crossed my mind. She said, you know what I think it is? She said, 
I think it's because he refused to get off focus. He stayed so focused on what is the big picture purpose for my life that in essence, for the sake of what we're talking about, it sort of kept him in position. Um, Because I totally agree with you. The position aspect of this is really more on us. And meaning that we can easily step out of position. And God will work to get us back into position, but it's even up to us how long that's going to take. And I, I have had to realize in what I'm called to do, and this is universal, I've discovered what we're called to do really does come out of our spirit. But it has to flow through our soul. And the enemy knows uh, he has nothing to match a call of God on someone. He's, He's never contrived anything to counter the anointing, the call of God. So he cannot go head to head, face to face, nose to nose with us in the spirit. So what he does is he crafts all of his maneuvers against us in the soul realm. Because if he can get us caught up in the soul realm, it gets us out of position. We can't see what we need to see. We can't hear what we need to hear. If I am just so frustrated in my soul, I'm not noticing windows of opportunity. I'm definitely not in position. I can even be in the right place at the right time. But because I'm not in position internally, um, I'm going to miss what I'm there that I'm called to do. So I have had to recognize, and we all have to realize this, that the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And those strongholds are really um, arrayed against us in the soul realm. So they're coming at our emotions. They're coming at our mind. They're coming to stir things up all to get us out of position. Um, Thank God we live in a day and a time where God, I mean, think about the last decade of ministry, how much teaching and knowledge God has raised up about, hello, the battlefield of the mind. Mm -hmm. Um, And I will say this, David, I think in generations past, our response to I've got to stay in position, I can't get caught up in my soul, was to ignore our soul. In times past, I think generations before us, the response was, well, don't even acknowledge that you have a soul. Just make such a big deal out of things of the spirit and spiritual things, and that's how you do it. But that's not what the word calls us to. We're not, I mean, God created us with a soul for a purpose. Mm -hmm. The component of our soul is powerful in the hands of God. So I do think that God is moving us as believers out of maybe a fallacy of pretend like you don't have a soul, don't acknowledge anything about it to saying, no, no, no. The point is have a healthy soul, have a healthy soul. One of the most spiritual things you can do is to make sure that your soul is healthy, because if you have a healthy soul that is subject to your spirit, then you can stand and say what Jesus said. Remember that point where Jesus said the enemy was coming for him, but what did he say? He said, he has no place in me. Well, he wasn't talking about his spirit. Of course, the devil has no place in our spirit. He was talking about the soul of him. He has no, there's no place where the enemy can get a hook in me. Why? Because I've made sure that I have a healthy soul and that my soul isn't calling the shots. And what do you mean by a healthy soul? Well, if our soul we know is made up of our mind, will, and emotions. So a healthy mind. A healthy mind. Healthy emotions. Healthy emotions. So my, talking about your mind, my belief system has got to be right. Uh, because if my belief system isn't right, my emotions aren't going to be right. So if if I hit cyclical places in my life where all of a sudden I'm dealing with anxiety, 
I'm dealing with depression. I'm dealing with insecurity. Uh, I'm dealing with feeling like I walk into a room and I already feel unworthy. I already feel rejected. Well, right there, this is telling me I need to deal with some unhealthy beliefs because the emotions that come with those beliefs are running me for whatever reason. And how will that affect a person's calling? It will totally knock you out of position. Um, this is such a major component that if as believers, we will do the diligent work of saying, maybe just maybe I need to make sure that my soul is healthy. What does the word say? Beloved, I wish above all that you prosper and be in health, even as, even as, even as your soul prospers. This was a big deal for this to be so predominantly placed in the word of God in the New Testament. It's a big deal to us because we need the church of Jesus Christ mobilized like never before. And what we can't afford is to get in that moment and then all of a sudden the enemy be able to get a hook in us and knock us out of position. The Lord's getting us ready. Well, part three, to come. I'm so excited. And we'll focus on finding our position. And that would include letting go of a false sense of peace. Man, I wanted to get into that. Yeah. Undergoing creative destruction. I also wanted to get into that. Firing your emotions. You're fired. Yes. Making daily declarations. We've <laughs> touched on that. And then praying in the Holy Ghost. Come on. But uh, before we say goodbye, the book is available. It's called Calling by Jen Tringale, J-E-N, short for Jennifer, Tringale, T-R-I-N-G-A-L-E. And it's available wherever books are sold on Whitaker House. Also on Jen's website, jentringale.com. We touched on that seven-day digital devo, youthful term there. It's a <laughs> devotional. And I think you download it, you said. Yes. And then you have something called The Calling, which is the same topic, finding our purpose, place, and position. Uh, it's a small group study. Tell us about that before we say goodbye. Yeah. So we put this together because a lot of churches right now, are, which I love, are doing like small group book studies. Uh, a lot do them in the fall. They'll do like six week book studies or even in the summer. And so that was one thing that we got a lot of requests for when I did my first book, Your Defining Moment. And so for this one, I said, we got to do it. So I went into the studio. It's six 20-minute video lessons. Uh, churches can buy it. I actually have friends that invited people in their neighborhood over and said, hey, we're going to do a book study. Uh, would you come? And so it's six video lessons. And then every person that's doing uh, the course, there's an outline that they get to fill in the blank, follow along, just help to take notes. And then there's a leader's guide that comes with it. So we have it for groups that they can do it. We just released an individual course version. So if you as an individual are going, I feel like I've been kind of stuck. I feel like I need to take a next step. I feel like I've been in a holding pattern. Then you can get the individual version as soon as you buy it. It's sent to you as a download link so you can start right away. And it's six video courses. You can go through the courses at your leisure. It's on demand. And I believe it is a great tool to help you get unstuck and to take those next steps that you need to take in whatever your calling might be. JenTrengale.com. Yes. And you are the, not queen, but princess. You're too young to be a queen. <laughs> princess of social media. How can people hook up with you? <laughs> what a title. I'm so thrilled. So on uh, Facebook, uh, Jen Tringale, you can find uh, the page there and like it. Twitter, Jen Tringale. And then Instagram, we're releasing a lot of brand new stuff, uh, just kind of highlighting it on Instagram first. So Instagram, Jen Tringale as well. All right. Are you ready for part three? I'm ready. All right. Well, for Jen Tringale, I'm David Warren, and I really mean it today. It's been another great road show. You've been listening to The Road Show. If you'd like to write to us, here's our address. The Road Show, P.O. Box 1924, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74101. 
Our email address is roadshow at oasisnetwork.org. The views of today's guest aren't necessarily those of this station, but we do appreciate and thank our guest for spending this time with us. The Roadshow, an Oasis Network presentation.